today's webinar, I'm going to talk about the custom symbol font library, what that is, what it can do for you, and how to create and manage it. So basically what you're doing is you're creating your own font, quote unquote, library uh, with the images that you require or desire for your control screens. Uh, bear in mind, this is only on control screens uh, where it becomes useful. Here's our two examples. The right is the default. So the default, as you can see, we have the home button and all the text that you would normally see when you design a control screen. On the left are images that I imported. And you can see the, the house button there on the top left as opposed to home. And then I did my own images for the radio button. So there's an on state and an off state. Uh, which you can select either one. So you have two images that you're importing into a button possible. I mean, you can import one button if you, or one image if you want, but we give you the ability with most buttons to import two images. So you have an on state and an off state. Um, and you can see my pair now button and the mute button, I changed to different images as well. So that's the basic of it is utilizing your own images. Now there's some we make available on our website where you can download. Uh, a good example is the, the Bluetooth and the mute. Uh, we have those available on our website. So you can just download those and use them if you don't want to uh, find them on your own. But generally speaking, the, the the internet is a crazy place. You can find whatever you want. So as long as the images aren't too large, uh, because size can be an issue, uh, depending, but we'll get into that. So now that you know what it can do, let's talk about how you access it. So when you're creating control screens and you have your elements uh, like your, your buttons, you have in the properties window to the right or where and by default it's the right, but it could be anywhere. But in the properties window, you'll see that you have the display type set to text. Usually that's the default display type. And you can see down below, you have on text, off text, very typical. However, you can select that display type and change it to symbol. Once you change it to symbol, you now notice that the on text and off text and color of the text disappears and you have two choices, uh, on symbol and off symbol. Now you have the ability to import what you've ostensibly already created of a library, but we'll get to that. And then getting to the library is easy. You just click on the none and you can see that you have the ability there's a drop down menu and you click edit and this pops open the symbol selector dialog now this is what it looks like by default it's completely empty now you'll notice that symbol fonts is going to be uh, under custom if you go up to that drop down list there's a myriad of other uh, fonts that are embedded in windows that you can use some of them don't work very well it really depends, like uh, wingdings and webdings, there's various ones that just don't work for whatever reason, but that's part of the selection process. How you go about importing is going to be something we need to jump into Composer for and to talk about. So let's do that without much further ado. So here's Composer, and you'll notice that these buttons are a little bit different. So from the example that we just saw, and the reason being is these are separate images. So this is a fader that has been converted to an up down uh, type. That's the mode of it. It's either fader, horizontal, vertical, vertical knob, or up down or horizontal, vertical. This is completely different. And these are direct images. So don't be confused by that. But we're gonna be talking about these controls here. As you can see, they have an on state and an off state. The same with the pair now button as a pressed state and an unpressed state, and the same with the mute button. So let's find out how we do that first and foremost. So let's go to the properties window. Let's go ahead and do this. Let's go to default. Okay, so let's bring in the default and click on an element. 
All right. Um, that's not a good example. Let's the mute button. There we go. So here's the mute button, and you can see in the properties over on the left. I moved it to the left. That's not default, by the way. So the display type is now text, as I showed you. So we're going to select symbol, and you'll notice the text disappeared over on the element itself. And here's our on symbol and off symbol uh, drop down menus. So let's go and go to edit to pop open this window. So this is what you're presented with when it's first open. Getting your symbols is very simple. Uh, it's, a, it's both simple and it's a little tricky because when you import, you're importing to these slots that you have selected. So if you want to import multiple images, you need to select multiple slots. So in this case, um, I want to import, let's say 55. So I have these selected. Then I go down to import selected symbol image files button. So click that and then I can go searching for images. Now you can see here I already have images uh, already picked out, but let's take something else that I uh, may have. So let's go to webinars. Let's see what I got here. Let's just use these. So I'm going to select all of them. It's much more than 55, but I just wanted to be safe that I can import as many as I need. Now, some of these are actual photos, so I don't want those selected. They're not image. They're not uh, uh, smaller images. Uh, they're large images, so I want to make sure I don't select those. But the rest of these are all smaller icon-sized images. Let's go ahead and hit open, and there you go. And I just imported the selected ones. Now, you'll notice that uh, previously I selected all the way up to 55 just to be safe that I was able to import as many as I could. Now, once these are in the menu or in your custom symbol library, this is your library for this site file. It is only within the site file. So when you hit OK and you save your site file, that's it. It's in the site file itself. This is not within Composer. It's site file based. So let's just say for the sake of argument, you want it to be available for another site file. So let's go back, go back to edit. And to do that, we want to go ahead and export all. So hit export all. And then let's go to the desktop. And we want to save it in here. The uh, file type is custom font. I know it's a long file type, but it does function for what we need it. So just name it what you want. So I'll just call it webinar um, three, no, it's four, four dash six dash 21, and then save. Export complete. So let's just say, I'm going to go ahead and delete these because you can delete all symbols if you want. So now let's pretend I've opened up another site file. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and hit the import button. So let's go through this process again. Pretend this is a new site file. I'm clicking on the element. I change the display type to symbol. And then I hit edit. And then I have an empty field. And then I go to import all. Then find the file that I've created. And hit open. And it imports all the symbol fonts. Now you can do this import process two ways. So you can actually keep importing different files depending on how many fonts they have in them, whether you have like 20 each or whatever, uh, you have the ability to import them. Let's do import all again, do it again, see what happens. So it throws you this uh, selector, symbol selector error. Well, it's not really an error, it's a, just a, it's telling you, do you want to remove all your symbols or do you want to add that's not already there? So you can just hit no, or you can just keep adding to them if it were a different file. So let's go ahead and find a different file. Should be, there we go. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit yes. So we want to replace those. And there you go. And there's a more complete file or font library. Uh, this was made for ISC uh, 2019, so this is all the elements we used. But 
it wasn't what I originally designed. So once you replace the library with other fonts in your site file, it's going to replace the ones that you have already installed. Because what happens now is like, okay, I'm going to go ahead and close. Hit OK. Now, if I go to what I've already created and remember my example, because they all look different now because it's a different library. And the reason why that is, is because everything's set by the custom number. So over here, let's go to the mute button. So over in symbol, it's on symbol is 13 and custom was 12. Well, previously my 12 and 13 were the buttons you saw earlier. But since I imported another library and, and deleted the rest of them, it's now the 12 and 13 of the new library. So the, sim, the, the custom number for your, your uh, element doesn't change when you change the library. So bear that in mind. I'm going to go back and get my originals back here. So let's do this. I'm just going to import just the ones I want. Where did Stu, oh, it was on the desktop, wasn't it? Idiot. <laughs> there we go. And yes, I just want to go ahead and replace those. There we go. All right, so imported all the images back. And so, well, it's not the correct library because remember I imported a yet another library that was for a different site file. So they're out of order. So that's about it for presentation purposes i mean if you have other questions i'd be I'm more than happy to uh answer them because that's it's a complex thing to get the first time but once you have it it's very easy to implement uh especially using uh individual images now i highly recommend sizing images uh not too small like pngs that aren't too small because you want it just in case, depending on the screen you're using. Like I designed for the T5 in mind. So as you can see here, this is the T5 uh, uh, restriction on the resolution. So this is 480 by 800. So my images, actually, you know what? Let's do this. Let's go ahead and close. I do not want to change. So let's reopen this guy. All right. There we go. There's my original symbols. So I designed, these were already, uh, like I said, these symbols that you see, these buttons, were something that you can actually uh, download from our website. And we include the, uh, the Photoshop files so you can edit them and change them however you want. Uh, these were changed and edited by myself, but just large enough to be, uh, visible and not blurry or uh, the, the resolution not too bad on T5. However, you're going to get into this kind of situation. So if the image is smaller or actually the, is larger than the size of the element, because right now this element is, this button I should say, is 190 by 100. So let's shrink it down a little bit and see what happens. Let's shrink it down a little bit and see what, come on, you can do that. There you go. So you see that uh, exclamation point? That exclamation point is just telling you the size of the file is larger than the area it's being displayed. So it may be a problem depending on the actual size of the image. And I mean size as in file size, like 6,000 kilobytes, 25 megabytes, or 192 kilobytes. It really depends. So it's just memory usage. So gen generally speaking, if you start seeing a lot of these uh, image warnings, be aware that maybe you just need to utilize a smaller uh, image. Or in this case, as you can see, the, the transition isn't that extreme. So I just keep it at that. But it, or if, if I were to import, like say a 25 meg, meg image and only utilize it in 100 by 100 square, that's still memory that's being utilized by the device that you're exporting to, whether it's uh, SimView or the T5 is even more uh, critical to keep the memory usage down on elements. So that's what that uh, exclamation point is telling you is that image that you've imported is larger than the area of the element.
In this case, that element is a button. But if you have any more questions, you can go to the website as usual, or you can just give us a call at 425-778-7728, extension 5. And with that, thank you very much. And be sure to join me on Thursday for my next webinar. Thanks a lot. Have a good day.